What's going on, guys? Adam again, back with Atomic Garage, and it is Tech Tip Tuesday. I'm a little late, but I'm here before the buzzer. Take a few seconds just to talk about V-Bands, them leaking, and how to fix them. Coming up in this video. So just as the intro stated, we're going to be talking about V-Bands, the fact that they leak and what to do to fix them. But before we talk about those V-Bands, the problem and how to fix them, I want to give a special shout out to the S-Box Nation. Thank you guys for checking out the videos, checking out the channel and messaging me on Instagram, guys. And Instagram is where you can see a lot of the projects beforehand. So thank you guys for reaching out. Thank you, Gabe, for being a loyal supporter and all you other guys. Other special shout out goes to tim shields tim you were the man for that coupon for harbor freight i thank you and i got some stuff that definitely is making my life just a little bit more easy just for those creature comforts but anyway guys if you are new to the channel please hit the subscribe button hit the like button youtube algorithm likes that all the youtube aside let's get into v-band clamps and how to fix them from leaking so normally guys, excuse the little bit of junk here, what you would have is your exhaust or whatever you're building, you'd have your V-band as well, and you'd have your welder. You'd have either your TIG welder or you'd have your MIG welder, either of the two. But the main thing with V-band and the clamps is the fact that you need to keep as little heat in them as possible so they don't warp. Now, me not being the absolute of perfect and best welders, I'm still working on controlling my heat and knowing the fine line between just enough heat and then too much heat. So unfortunately, I warped my V-bands. Yes, I did. I warped them. And so even though I warped the V-bands, there's a way to fix it. So once you have completely welded up your V-band and you are ready to go, what you want to do is you want to hit that tool right there. You want to hit that belt sander. And when you go to that belt sander, you will hit that belt sander for, I don't know, 30 seconds, maybe a minute, because you're trying to completely knock down the edge zone. And I'm going to show you what it looks like once you've hit it with a belt sander. So if you could see here, this is what you would see. You see those cross hatches. You see a little bit of copper there as well, but it is straightened for the most part. That's where you're going to get most of your results at. Most of your results are going to come from that belt sander and making sure that you have everything pretty straight for the most part. But there is another trick to the trade as well, and that would be some Permatex. Now, you guys are probably aren't new to Permatex because they have their copper spray gasket, which works perfectly. Let's say you've broken off a bolt to your exhaust manifold. You can spray this on your gasket and it is perfect it, it it seals it up it's sticky when it's still when it just came off the can and it works wonders and the same thing goes for the ultra copper it's a gasket maker so you've already got most of your exhaust perfect most of it is perfect and it may be completely straight but now if you take this here and you dab just a little bit around it you don't need to glob it on but if you dab just a little bit around it and then put everything on together and let it seal. Now it says for one hour and then up to 24 hours, but let it sit for an entire day. And when you do that, you will no longer have a leaking V band. It is the greatest thing in the world. So if you are new to Permatex and a lot of their stuff, please, please, please go to your local parts store, buy it. I promise you, you will come back and thank me later. So that's it, guys. I mean, a pretty simple Tech Tip Tuesday, as it were, and probably something that you guys already know, but this stuff is gold when it comes to V-band clamps because they still can come off, and when they come off, you can hit them with a light little, uh, little sanding disc, and it knocks it right back off, and you're good to go all over again, but it stops it from leaking because the problem I was having, if you can see down here, it was leaking not from the weld, but it was leaking because the two mating surfaces weren't perfect. And since those mating surfaces weren't perfect, that's what it led to. And that's what I'm working on now. Just a couple little things, little odds and ends while I wait for parts to come in so I can fix some slightly, slightly bigger things going on. But that's it for me, guys. And that's it for this Tech Tip Tuesday. 
So guys, this is my one and probably my only submission for Tech Tip Tuesday, as it were. But it is something that I feel is very valuable and you might find it being the same way as well. So if it helps you in the comment section below, let me know what you guys think of it. But that's it for me, guys. That's it for all I had for Tech Tip Tuesday. I will catch you guys in the next one. Keep wrenching. Peace. Ah.